Hello. Today I'm going to demonstrate the dynamic testing tool DT10 by Heartland Data. DT10 operation is very simple and user-friendly. Let me introduce how to set up the demo unit. The DT10 consists of the dynamic tracing hardware and application loaded on a PC. This is a sample target board for a demonstration and it is equipped with a distance sensor, a buzzer, LED lights and display. There are six different connecting methods with DT10 Dynamic Tracer. This demo unit is connected through the GPIO interface method by utilizing six available I.O. ports with the DT10 optional adapter box. The dynamic tracer is connected with the PC through USB 2.0 connection. When you start running your program on the target board, the execution data will be transmitted through the connection box into this dynamic tracer. The dynamic tracer processes that data and adds the independent timestamps, test point number, and other necessary information and transfers onto the hard disk drive of the PC. There are two different types of connection boxes depending on the six different types of connections. This is an optional analog box. To connect the analog box, detach the adapter box from the dynamic tracer main unit and insert the analog box in between the two. Let me briefly introduce this analog box. There are two analog inputs and four digital input channels available so that you can monitor and analyze the simultaneous behavior of your program and the specific digital ports and analog terminals on your board. Start DT10 application. To launch the DT10 application on a PC, double-click this DT10 shortcut icon. The DT10 initial screen will pop up. When you import your new source code onto the DT10 application to insert test points, click this new icon, then follow the direction. A new project will be created, and necessary test points will be automatically added onto your source code. Take the new source code to your own development environment and compile and load the executable program onto your target system like how you do normally. Once you have loaded your new program with test points onto your system, click this Open icon. For this demo, I shall open this previously created project file. This view is called Folder View. To view the specific function module, click and select the source folder. When you click on the name of the specific function, your source code will pop up. This view is called Source Code View. In this Source Code View, you can see these green lines named Test Point. All test points have been automatically inserted when you registered your source code and created your new project initially by this DT10 application. As you can see here by default, Test Pin were inserted at all location of funk in, funk out, and conditional branches. You can add additional test point manually by the right click of your mouse and select different types of test points, such as insert test point, insert variable, value point, insert CPU load measurement point, insert event trigger point, and so on. From the Plan pull-down menu, you can select the insert points by files or by functions. You can disable or enable each test point. By unchecking this checkbox, the specific test point becomes inactive. By checking again, the same test point becomes active. Once you change any test point, you need to save the project. Bring the project to your own development environment, compile the new project, and load the executable file onto your target system. Now we are ready to start testing. Select the test pull-down menu and click the Execute or click this blue Execute icon. 
then the execute program dialog box will pop out. Now I can start taking the execution log files from the demo board through the dynamic tracer onto the PC hard disk drive by pushing this execute button. Even during the test while taking log files, you can see this test report operation view. For now, let me hide this detail. This view is optional real-time CPU performance monitor. This tab shows analog boxes multi-wave scope view. Now let me hide this window too. This is a test report view. In a real-time mode, each line shows a tracing result from each executed test point. From left to right, each column data indicates test point number, core number, source code name, function name, step number, description, memory, value of the valuables, elapsed time from the beginning, time difference between steps, in addition to the module name, and so on. To quit the test, click the stop button. Execution tracing will stop when you push the stop button in this get test report pop-up window. From the test pull-down menu, select and click the test report collecting condition setting. Then, test report collection condition settings menu will pop up. You can assign the starting and stopping time by the timer, by the size of log, or by the arbitrary test points by creating a specific profile. Step tracing. Let's consider the realistic problem. How do you resolve a bug when your target system freezes during the debugging and testing? Let's try a similar situation by using this demo unit. Execute demo unit and start the test and click execute. Cut off the power supply. As you can see, all the trace data were recorded right up to the freezing. And click stop at the get test report window. Step tracing. By pressing shift plus function 10 keys, you can trace back the logged data. As you can see here, all the tracing data has been captured until the last step before freezing. By pressing function key by itself, you can trace forward your logged data. Each trace data is synchronized with the specific source code, so you can easily find the cause of the hung up, in this demo case, the power down timing. If you trace the VCC power supply voltage level through the analog box, you can check the exact timing of the power down voltage level and also you can check if the power off sequence is correct as you designed or not. Step tracing function is one of the fundamental functions of DT10. Well, step tracing is useful. However, if you take logs up to 32 days long tracing, it does not make sense to check them step by step. So, I'd like to introduce some of the basic analysis functions of DT10. Report Analysis Select the Report Analysis pull-down menu, then you can select many different types of reports such as Coverage Report, Execution Time Report, Function Period Time Report, and so on. Right now, click on Analyze Test Report. Select Files to Analyze Branch Coverage window will pop up. At this window, you can select the specific function modules, but now simply click OK. Now we see four new tabs here. Additionally to the original test report tab, you see the execution time report tab, functional period time report tab, and coverage report tab. Within the source code view, you see some of the test points colors changed from green to red. Red shows the specific test points already executed during the test. On the other hand, the green colored test points have not been tested. Reassignment of color attributes is also available. Coverage Report Statement Coverage Select Coverage Report tab. Click the Statement Coverage column cell and sort the data. The highlighted color visually categorizes the difference of the coverage ratio. When you click this function, the total number of effective test points in this function are 14 and 10 out of them are already executed. So the statement coverage ratio is currently 71%.
To improve the coverage ratio for the specific function, double click this line, then a new window with several tabs will pop up. Select Not Executed Tracing Points. All test points which have not been executed will be listed here. By selecting and double clicking the specific test points, you can instantly jump to the test point on the target source code view. By checking the conditional branch above, QA specialists can easily identify the necessary testing operations to improve the coverage. Branch Coverage If you want to focus on the branch coverage, display the coverage report view to the right by moving the scroll bar. Then you see the branch coverage. Let's check this function. In this function, 20 test points were executed out of 25 with 80% branch coverage. Double click here. Then you can see the structural chart of this function within the branch coverage detailed report pop-up window. Each rectangular box shows a test point. Yellow boxes mean both true and false cases have been executed. A red box means not executed. By double clicking the rectangular box, you can jump onto the target test point in the source code view. Dashed line rectangular boxes mean virtual else and is not described in the actual source code. Potential bugs are hidden under such virtual branches, as you know. Execution Time Report Select Execution Time Report tab. In this Execution Time Report, you can check the number of passages, maximum, average, and minimum execution time of each function. By pressing the right click of your mouse, you can select the execution time graph or histogram. Let's select the execution time graph. The horizontal axis shows each function and vertical axis shows execution time. Select total, average, maximum, minimum, or share ratio. Let's focus on this specific function. We can tell that this function executed 678 times during the test. Right-click your mouse and select Open Execution Time Histogram. Now you can see the statistical dispersion graph here. To improve the performance of your program, the best approach will be analyzing the behavior at the bottleneck points. So, double-click this bar. Then, all the report numbers of this time range are shown in this list. Select the maximum cell and double-click. Then, all the execution passes are highlighted in green cells in this report so that you can find the causes of the poor performance easily. By checking these tracing datas, experienced engineers can easily identify the real cause of the poor performance such as unexpected interrupts, needless loops, etc. Function Trace Report If you feel line-by-line -line checking will be a burden, you can also refer to this Function Trace Report by the right click of your mouse. Function Trace Report windows will display and it indicates the behavior of the program graphically. The time axis is vertical and this horizontal axis indicates the depth of the nest of the functions. Each square reflects one test point and of course you can jump onto the report line and the source code by a simple double click. By a single click at each square, you can measure time differences between the two rulers. If you register the name of the task in advance, you can easily recognize how the task has been dispatched or interrupted. Function Transaction Scope When you want to see the big picture of the program behavior, I recommend using this Function Transaction Scope from the Report Analysis pull-down menu. In this chart, Time is the horizontal axis. All the function names are listed here vertically so that you can comprehend each function's transition visually. By clicking any part of this chart, you can jump onto the target source code and time report. This function transaction scope is very useful to check the mutual interactions of all functions, periodic and overall behavior, especially when you need to look into programs which were written by other programmers. Under the execution time report, DT10 measures the execution time between funk in and funk out of each function. 
Function Period Time Report. Click the Function Period Time Report tab. This Function Time Report looks similar to the Execution Time Report. However, it measures the execution time from the Funkin test point to the next Funkin test point of the same function. This report helps to validate the periodical requirement of specific functions such as timer counters or periodical operations. There are many other functions and features available in this DT10. However, let me introduce just one more function! That is, Valuable Monitor! Click the Report Analysis pull-down menu and then select the Valuable Monitor and open Valuable Monitor then the Valuable Monitor window will pop up. Check mark the valuable names you want to view. You see how these valuables are changing time to time. You can select up to 50 valuables at the same time. As you can see now, you can observe how each valuable is changing and you are able to check the actual timing. Then you can jump to the source code. Valuable Monitor really helps to figure out the timing of unexpected behavior of the program or external analog data input such as sensor data, a power surge, or power drop. In the latest version of DT10, you can assign arbitrary points to measure the execution time and period time. Closing. We believe all software programmers, embedded engineers, and QA specialists can get a lot of benefit by using this DT10 and improve quality and minimize the development cycle. DT10 by Heartland Data. For further information, visit us online at www.heartlanddata.com.